This curb log is an interview. Bow, 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 bow. And it's for Voice October 2. Bow, 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 bow. And today, my guest is Brent Miller. The, bow, 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 bow. <laughs> the battlefield has shifted, but some say the search for the Minicon still wages. Welcome. <laughs> Good, good start. Welcome to everybody to uh, Voice October 2018. I'm back yet again, where I interview various veterans of the voiceover world, as it were. Yes, back again. I think this is my, uh, God, like fourth consecutive year in a row of doing this, uh, mayhaps. And uh, apologies for the Skype noise that I'm going to set myself to do not disturb. We're professional here. Uh, I am joined by my first guest. Speak for yourself. Uh, I, you know, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, I'm, I'm an amateur. That, well, I compared to you, I mean, you know, uh, I my first guest is uh, it hails from the the mis mystical land of Vancouver, Canada, a, a far off, uh, mysterious place. Uh, really, take off your hosers, Steve. <laughs> I, Just gonna get, go eat some Canadian bacon. I, I, Call you later. That sounds okay, that's cool. A, that sounds delicious. Go Oilers, go. I'm <laughs> I know him best personally as Hotshot from Transformers Armada and Energon, and oddly, not Cybertron. What is up with that? That's not okay. Uh, various oh, characters... Oh, you're going to jump to that one right away? Is that what we're doing right now? Is that, is that going first? Uh, no, we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, various characters in the Gundam franchise, and uh, and you all know him massively so in the last, like, God, what, like seven or eight years at this point, uh, as the voice of Zane uh, from the Lego Ninjago animated series. Uh, please welcome Monsieur Brent Millar. Hello. Uh, is, is this where they cheer? <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I'm not like. It's a little awkward when it's this... only you and me, dude. <laughs> hold you know... on, hold on. <sighs> ah, oh my God, I love you so much. Oh, you, he's my favorite ninja. <laughs> well, hi, welcome. Thanks, Thanks dude. <laughs> Thank you for uh, taking the time out of your uh, extremely busy schedule. I, I imagine uh, to do this. Um, now, uh, no? viewers, I mean <laughs> listeners, I met with Chris. For coffee uh, last was it last year? Was, I, was, it, year? was, was it, it already? Was it, year? was it already last year? Was it? When did Maybe you, eight, when did you come visit LA? Something? When did you come visit? But LA? I came on an LA thirty six hour trip, and uh -huh. I met with Chris for like an hour, hour and a half. It was very. Well, we we had a small window, but we made it happen. Chris is a dude, so all you who follow Chris, good on you. Oh well, thanks. No, I mean, dude, you're you're stand up. I uh, like you. You. Well, you know, I mean, I, I've technically this. See, this is this is interesting for me because I mean, I've been following your work for a very, very long time because, uh, you know, people. Who, me <laughs> I mean, well, I, people who follow me and what I do and what I'm into know that I mean, I, I'm a walking, talking encyclopedia of uh, of voiceover trivia and and other such things. Um, and uh, you know, Transformers Armada was a, a series I was I was big, big into uh, in. Right. <clears throat> school, I'll just say school. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I've been aware of, of you for quite a long time. And, you know, when you started uh, doing your YouTube stuff, which I want to get into uh, talking about later as well, uh, I was excited because, oh, my God, like, Brent Miller is such a mystery. You weren't someone that I was, you know, seeing at, like, I, at panels at conventions and doing interviews or whatever. Uh, you know, but you were you were one that I was uh, I was interested to learn more about and, and seeing you do all this stuff lately uh, has been awesome because there, you know, there are so few of the uh, the Vancouver guys that, that do, uh, you know, social media, certainly not nearly to the extent that you do, um, you know, hence, yeah. hence why I say busy schedule. But um, but yeah, and this is exciting for me because uh, not only is uh, I, I realize my last two uh, uh, Vancouver guests are both people that moved here. Uh, Ian, oh, who, who, uh, who'd you get on? Ian Corlett was last year, uh, and, yeah, the year yeah. and the year before that was uh, Mr. Trevor Duvall. Uh, I just saw him a couple days ago. Oh, beautiful! Yeah, he's he is awesome. Yes, uh, he's doing very very well in L.A. Uh, yeah, yeah, super well. I hear he's on some Marvel show or like maybe three or four of them or something like that. Yeah, yeah. He, he's, <laughs> he's doing. The thing I'm curious about him though is he left he left Canada, and I saw him the other day, and I'm like, where's your tan? That's what I'm thinking. Like, <laughs> shouldn't you have a tan? I mean, he's <laughs> you still look he, the same. He's he's he's, mo he's mostly Irish. So I mean, he he doesn't tan well to be honest. Uh, but <laughs> but I see Ian all the time too. Ian comes up a lot to Vancouver, so oh yeah, uh, he tra Ian's back and forth. So, oh yeah, yeah he's yeah, yeah he's well traveled that man. Uh, but but you're my first uh, Vancouver guest that is still uh, working predominantly in Vancouver, 
And, right. uh, and also, uh, I'm excited because for most of my other guests, I, I tend to know like their kind of, uh, you know, backstory and history into how they got into this. I don't know yours, and I'm actually excited to, to learn yours. So to start with, why don't you tell the folks out there, and mainly me, because I want to know, can you show me, right. uh, about your kind of introduction into the world of acting and cartoons and entertainment and now Legos and all that, please. It started when I was a little kid, and um, you know it, when Indiana Jones was out, I would do all the. Uh, I wouldn't do. I wouldn't do any voices. I would do the the fight reacts. So you know when Indiana Jones was like, classic, all that stuff. Of course, it was like it was like it was like done on a keyboard. It was some like sixty five year old guy just going, you know, on the keyboard, right? But those fake noises I would always emulate and then as I got older I started to do a lot of voices um, just for fun in fact I had a huge issue with my dad because my dad was in business and I would do the answer machine up in some sort of uh, funny voice and then he would like find out about it get really mad at me say look I'm in business you can't do that what if somebody from business phones home I'm like nobody phones you here they phone you at work blah 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 and then I would change it and this was, <laughs> was like an ongoing cycle and uh so we were having a laugh about this the other night and I said dad it served me well though that was my practice but years later I didn't know I didn't like most people I didn't think about a voiceover industry like I didn't think that was a thing like most people don't realize there's a job there and I went to a, a radio school out here to become a radio DJ or, you know, broadcaster. That was my thing. And I went to school and then I realized how much money they made. Um, we went into second year. Oh, he's so shallow. Oh, my gosh. He's all about the money. No, but it's true, though. <laughs> I, I realized how much money they made per year. And I was like, oh, geez, I got to, like, move to a small town. I'm not going to make any money. I'm just basically, basically, honestly, minimum minimum wage in a lot of those markets. And then one day, because we were running the radio station in the second year, David Kay shows up. You know, you know who David Kay is? Oh, of one hundred percent, of course. Yeah, dude's the man, right? David Kay is like the man. So he he shows up in a Porsche. Not that it matters, but he was dressed to the nines. And at the time, um, Beast Beast Wars was on TV. Mm -hmm. Like I had known about Beast Wars, and I had watched these voices and listened, and it fascinated me. And then he comes and he pulls out his Megatron, and he shows all these like demos. Um, you know, he showed his animation demo, and I was like, "Man, this is exactly what I want to do." So I took him out for lunch. I said, I went up to him and I said, "I I will take you to a fancy lunch. Can I take you to lunch?" And he said, "Yes." So I went and took him to lunch, and we had a great lunch. And I said, how do I get into this business? He gave me some tips. Um, I went and did a, a practicum at a casting company and kind of learned the ins and outs. And actually, at the start, I started to, to get into some casting. And eventually, I worked myself up to voice director. But then I focused just on acting, and I left that world behind. But but yeah, so that was my inner, like, first six months, I just scoped out the business, uh, figured out what agent I wanted to get with. I did a demo. Within two months, um, I got my first part. It's funny. Uh, have you ever heard of this guy uh, called Doug Parker? Yes, one of the. He's like one of the early, early uh, directors out there. I think. Yeah. 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 And and my first. Uh, now, most I have never said this publicly, but it is kind of a really good story. Uh, my first interaction with Doug, um, I got introduced and said, "Oh, this is Brent. He's he's you know wanting to get into voice acting." And there was like a, a bunch of voice demos. And he goes, good luck. Unless you're better than any of these guys, you don't got a chance. And he walks away from me. He walks away because you don't got a chance. He walks away. And, and the first thing I'm thinking is, what a jerk, right? But at the same, the same thing, it triggered me to say, I'm going to prove you wrong. And I like Doug. Like I got to know Doug a lot. And within two months... He hired me on my very first cartoon. So wow. he was my first. And he and in Vancouver, Doug Parker was the guy that hired a lot of guys and, and got them their start. Like yeah. he was there kind of near the beginning. And uh, yeah, so it was funny because he, he was he was right. Right. And he didn't know at the time my ability or anything. And I was thinking to myself, but but Doug, I, I am as good as these guys. <laughs> at least in my mind, I was. I mean, I'm not as experienced as them. I'm a little bit green. I got to get in there. But. I'm going to show you, man. And so instead of being like discouraged, I used it as a, oh, I'm going to show you card, you know, and that's, <laughs> that's what I did. So that was my start. It all started with a lunch 
with David K. Um, way back in the day when he came and visited uh, where I was getting a radio broadcasting diploma. Wow. I was, you know, it was funny. I, I had to make the obvious joke of like, wow, man, Autobots and Decepticons dining together and helping each other. <laughs> but then again, you know, I mean, obviously David Kay, those of you who don't know, is Megatron in many, many Transformer series uh, up in Canada. Uh, you, know. you know, David Kay, here's a funny story with David oh. Kay. Now, we did, I did a story. Now, Transformers was, uh, was dubbing. So uh-huh. we didn't work in the studio with each other. We were just going from the to, uh, hey, guys, let's go. Come on. And with David K, um, years later, we did a show called uh, Geotrax. It mm-hmm. was for like Fisher Price uh, toys. And I played kind of like this dumb uh, redneck, uh, cute little character in his 20s. And David K was playing the older character. And I, I remember the day he walks in and we're like right beside each other on the mic. And he was like, look at you, man. Look at you. And I'm like. Thanks for that lunch, dude. <laughs> it went somewhere with me. So, yeah, that was my story. It was kind of it was kind of a father-son moment, although, yeah, it was cool. That's they, crazy. He's not that old. But, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it, actually, like it's, a... it, it's funny you uh, talking about Trevor earlier. I'm, uh, to, sorry, to, sorry to brag for a second. I, you know, Trevor was, was not necessarily like a, a mentor uh, officially, but, I mean, I listened to his podcast for so many years and learned right. so many things, especially about a lot of the uh, – uh, pitfalls of the business um, from listening to his show and hearing, you know, the interviews with like, you know, all of you guys, uh, you know, and even though he didn't interview you, which he should have. Uh, you but... know what, though, <laughs> to go with your original intro and you're talking about me and and the mystery around me, right? Uh, uh-huh. Um, I, okay. Funny enough, I mean, you probably know this by now, but my wife is Nicole Boma. Like, she goes by stage name. Mm-hmm. And she's done, like, a ton of stuff, but mostly, like, back in the day, a ton of anime. So mm-hmm. we, we, the two of us, got convention offers all the time. Um, you know, people wanted us out there and doing this stuff. But we are such private people mm-hmm. that we literally said no to everything. Wow, um, okay. The limelight, the spotlight never was something I craved was never something that um, I was looking for. I got a lot of love around me from people, and I didn't feel like I needed it from others with the pats on the backs and mm-hmm. you're so awesome and that. I never chased that, right? Yeah. Like I know for some actors, that's what they chase. They like the fame. They like that feeling. That's just not me. That's why literally just till two years ago, I launched social media on June uh, 30th. I did YouTube. Twitter and Instagram in one night. Mm-hmm. It was a crazy night in a hotel room. I was like, are you sure you want to do this? And <laughs> I did all three right at once. And I got to tell you, it was pretty exciting with my phone just lighting up, like with all the followers that, uh, that for that first 24 hours, it was like, this is really cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, but then you get a bunch of losers on the internet and trolls and you realize maybe this is a little bit more of a headache than I wanted. Uh, so I- well, yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, the, the internet is a, is a cruel mistress at times. But I mean, you know, I've... Uh, <clears throat> I've been following, and I don't want to get to the, you know, the, the heart of the YouTube stuff you've been doing a little later when we talk about Ninjago, but I mean, I've been following uh, a lot of the stuff you've been posted on there, a lot of the interviews, which have all been fantastic. Um, and I mean, like, even, even there, it seems like you get a, a lot of love from people, and, and, that, and not just with you, but with a lot of people that, like, when they're, like, finally, oh, I'm going to do a convention or, or, or you know, go, on, go on Twitter or whatever, like... You know, and if, if it's someone like yourself who like, oh, dude, I grew up with whatever this thing you were on, you know, however many years ago, and then they get to just express like, dude, you were so good in that. Oh man, you like made my childhood or whatever, you know, what right. have you. Like that 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 is still super nice. Yet I, uh, I I've I've met many people who similarly are just like, I don't want to I don't want to do this stuff. I just want to. I just want to do the work and then go home and take the garbage out and relax and go to right. sleep and not have to worry about it. Well, so, you know. You know, for me, it changed because um, a couple of years ago, like Ninjago has been going on for, well, a, a lot of seasons. Like there's nine official seasons out there now. Yeah. And uh, like almost 100 episodes. And I and I went to a Lego behind the scenes video. I mean, it's got a lot of hits. You can see it on the Lego site. Mm-hmm. And they shot that, I think, on the third season. And I got my hat on backwards and I read the comments and the comments were like, Oh man, the dude that plays Zane, he's so gangsta. And then another comment, yeah, he must be a rapper. <laughs> and I'm thinking like, no, guys, I've got my hat on backwards because if I have my hat on forward, it's gonna pop the microphone. Like they don't, <laughs> they didn't know. So I was like, somebody's got to set these people straight, you know. And this idea of the cartoon world, not a lot of people know about. I was like, 
if anybody can like be friendly with fellow voice actors, sit down with them and do it in a fun way that relates to kids and adults, I just thought it could be me. So I said, okay, I'll throw myself out there. And I also recognize selfishly also uh, in today's age for the future, for the future, this is where I see it, Mm -hmm. that having a following and influence can help probably down the road with castings and whatnot. Oh, yeah. Um, Yep. You know, it's that world has just opened up recently. And selfishly, the third reason and probably one of the most important reasons is to help my children who are actors. Um, They are both uh, on TV and film projects and voice projects. And I went, you know what? If I can help boost their uh, bump their social media a little bit at the start just to give them a a boost, um, I was going to do it for them. So that's kind of the three reasons. It was fan driven. But selfishly, I realized once I got into it that, oh, maybe I'm going to get down the road. This will get me some work. And then third it was obviously for my children just to help them out. So that's the reason why I eventually went on to it. It was, it it wasn't, it wasn't for accolades and attention and all that stuff. Like even my wife is so minimal Mm -hmm. on what she does. Yeah. Like, um, and back in the day, I mean, she was Powerpuff Z. She's Holly, she's Holly hobby. She was on uh, Polly pockets, all those shows, Barbie. Oh yeah. All the shows. All the shows that none of your listeners. Will hey, watch. Yo, you know what? Hey, listen, man. Do you you would be surprised? I mean, like, I mean, look. With, with me, I'm the freak that like I knew who just everybody was because like I was really you know not not to go too much into that story because most mostly because people know this already. But I mean, I became really interested in what you guys did when I was in like middle school, and that's right. kind of what led me to be become like a you know, walking, talking Rolodex of what you guys do, because it was interesting to me. And that's what led me to want to do it myself. Um, but, but by the way, just to, to re- rewind a little bit, first of all, that, that, none of that is selfish in my mind at all. I, I think those are actually quite adequate reasons for doing this. And I, I, I want to, I want to go back way back earlier to uh, the backstory part for a second. So are you, are you originally from Vancouver? Yes. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Because you know, it's funny. Like uh, so many of the other folks that they're here, like, oh, Edmonton, Toronto, Calgary, whatever. So I think you're the first one I've met who like is actually from Vancouver. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm gonna tell all your listeners right now that the internet's got so many things wrong. Like birthdays. If you go to Wikipedia, it's a picture of some other dude, man. <laughs> I'm like, who puts that up? Like, and my wife. Everybody thinks she's from Edmonton. No, she was born and raised in Vancouver. It. So, yeah, there's all this weird information. And I, I get, like, I'm sure you do as well, get nonstop questions about, oh, I didn't know you were this, that, and that. And I'm like, because I wasn't, you know? Uh, like, yeah. Uh, your your <laughs> home uh, home city is uh, is gorgeous. I have been to visit many years ago. And uh, I love, it, it's like, I'm like, oh, it's like New York, but clean. I'm from New York originally. Uh, oh. not, not that I don't love Manhattan, but, you know. Uh, so, so let you, me tell you something about my city. Uh-huh. It's beautiful for three months of the year. <laughs> The rest of the year, it is piss and rain. Mm. It's it rains so much. It's 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 rainy. Uh-huh. So I, I I do something in every November. I try to go away on a sunny vacation just to break it up. Yeah. But but on, honestly, like um, we you know, there's some great benefits of being in Canada and being in the city and blah, blah, blah. But the one thing you Americans got on us that we we just can never compete, not that we ever try to compete because we're too polite anyways, but if we did try to compete with you guys, we would never win the weather battle. Like there's just (laughs) – like even if you go – like there's so many places in in the States where you could live in sunshine. Like you have so many options. And I can't move to you. I can't move to you. So like it's really hard. To do a Trevor Duvall or a, with David Kay or an Ian Corlett, like it's it's a a lot of work to try to like work in L.A. Uh, or Vancouver and make the switch for being Canadian, right? But yeah. if you're born yeah. you're born, you're you're lucky, man. You got sunshine. Like I love sunshine, I, and I'm like I'm the whitest guy out there. I need the sunshine. <laughs> You know, hey, man, hey, grass is always greener because, I mean, like, I, I prefer cold and, like, you know, I mean, over here, speaking of rain earlier, I mean, like, when, when it's when it's winter and, like, you know, I'm in, like, December or whatever, it's, like, Christmas time and it's raining. I, I just, I go outside spinning around like a Disney princess. It's snowing. Yay, it's snow. <laughs> so, but, uh, so, so living in Vancouver, so, I mean, you know, having a little bit more accessibility, you know, without having to, you know, move across the country to a, a major area where, uh, you know, animation stuff is done and everything. And uh, so you started yeah. at, at, I guess, at the, the early 2000s or late 90s? Uh, 
I'm trying to remember, man. It was a long. I was I was young. It was a long time ago. Oh wait, hold on. I'm full of crap. Don't listen to me. I'm looking at your your credits. I'm seeing Dragon Tales in the '90s, See, late late '90s. Even you maybe. look at those credits. I, yeah. I'm telling you right now. Even if you look at those credits, they're not complete. I'm oh I'm, I'm sure. Never, I'm sure. Yeah. I've never gone on there, and you know I probably should. But the reality is, is so many years have passed that I really don't care. I think I've been doing voice for 19 years. I think. Okay. Okay. I think 18 or 19. But there's so many years that have passed that I really don't um, care about past credits and all sure, that stuff. Sure. And maybe that kind of goes with my whole feeling of um, where I am now, just with my career, career and not caring about people patting me on the back and whatnot, right? Like yeah. I just, I probably should care about that stuff, but, but. You know, all these years I haven't, so now I care a little bit, but not enough to really go back, you know, and correct it. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm it's probably just the, I I work really hard in a lot of areas of life, and that's one area where I'm maybe a little bit lazy. So well, uh, yeah, not, not not a thing that affects your life in the in the long run. So I wouldn't even beat yourself up for that. But uh, going back to the early days, I want to talk a little bit about Transformers because let's do it. That was that was a show I followed uh, for a very long time. I followed all of Armada. Uh, I think the majority of Energon and then a little bit of Cybertron that I kind of gave up. But uh, Hotshot was my favorite Autobot back then. Um, oh, cool. And it was funny because I, I missed the boat on G1 Transformers, the original old school one. Uh, I only saw little bits and pieces of it. I was familiar with Optimus and Megatron because you can't be a North American without knowing who the hell they are. Uh, you know, and I saw a little teeny tiny bit of Beast Wars. Uh, but Armada was the one that I kind of was like, okay, now I'm getting it on the ground level, and I'm into this one. I'm going to follow it from start to finish. And uh, and, and it's funny because actually on the note of the – I, I don't know if you know this, if you ever looked this up. Uh, I found out apparently uh, Hotshot is supposed to be Hot Rod from G1 in terms of, like, the character. Uh, there was some kind of thing, I guess, where with the anime trilogy of Transformer shows at the time – uh, that you guys did. Uh, a bunch of them were like renamed for whatever reason. Uh, there, there was never a right. clear indication as to why. But Hotshot is supposed to be the hot rod, like you know, young tough guy from the G1 series, uh, which makes sense as to why he's in there as one of the leads. But was that uh, was that the first like really really big show that you had done that you could remember from from back then? Time out a sec. I need to comment on what you just said. Oh ho. Uh, I, I was told at the time. That he was like the bumblebee. Oh, uh, see, okay, that's like, that's funny. Okay. He 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 was described to me as like the second in command, right. To Optimus, right. The young like uh, hero up up and coming, um, that will eventually take over for Optimus and all that. Okay. But but yeah, but he I think he was he was the replacement for Bumblebee. Mm -hmm. Now maybe it was Hot Rod. I mean, this is going back a while, right? Of so, course, yeah. Gosh, I try to remember. And <laughs> I, and I'm and I don't know like. As far as big, no, I'd done, I mean, I think I'd done a bunch of cool things that were noteworthy before that. Mm -hmm. um, like, man, you're asking me for stuff. Wow, that was, okay. Uh, I would say that it was the, it was the, it was definitely the coolest one I had done. Mm -hmm. Like, it was definitely like, because uh, every kid, you know, grows up on some form of Transformers. Uh -huh. And I, I literally remember the first time I said transform in the, in the studio. Yeah. And I was thinking to myself, man, I would have done this for free. Like, <laughs> this is my childhood. It felt so cool. And I know I saw the um, the shortlist. I don't know, remember how I saw the shortlist on that. But somehow I caught a, a glimpse of how many guys. Uh, so for anybody that's not listening, maybe like back in the day, um, casting directors would bring in people. And we would audition for parts. Now everything's done mostly from MP3s from our home studios or our homes. And then they narrow it down and maybe bring four people back for callbacks. But back in the day, you would maybe do two or three days worth of casting. So you would maybe see 80 to 100 people for that one part. So I saw that there was 13 guys that got submitted for Hot Shot. Now back in the day, they would have mostly, they would they did like five or six per character, sometimes even only three people. So the casting director had a lot of power. Mm -hmm. But I saw that I was one of the 13, and I was like, oh, cool, I got a shot. And then I was lucky that I, I obviously got it. Where I was unlocked, lucky was to lose it when it went to uh, whatever, the third one. Uh -huh. You tell me. What was the third one? Uh, th uh, Cybertron. That, Cyber was, that, was when, that was when that, 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 that rat 
Kirby Morrow took over the no, no, he, no he's great. He's great. No, uh, <laughs> let me explain that story. Let me because I have to be honest with you. Okay. That was that was sad for me. Okay. I uh, it was not my decision because mm-hmm. I went on stupidly um, when that all went down. I went on as a voice actor, did some googling, and saw a lot of fans were mad about that mm-hmm. and like. Well, why did Brent Miller leave the show? Like, what's the reason? They're mad. And I'm like, uh, what actually happened was we did the first two seasons and then they a new producer came for the third mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. And they decided that because they were a new producer to do new auditions for all the characters. Yeah. So so I went and going, well, can't you just watch 104 episodes that I voiced already? But <laughs> okay. So I went in, and um, Kirby at the time he was pretty hot stuff in the vo- and still is, you know. But at the time he was like the young, one of the young voices that like, got a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so I, he just thought he was playing like a younger character on some of the other versions, I think. But he wasn't playing a transformer, and then he just auditioned for the part just like everybody else did. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, it's you know I should be able to keep this role. But yeah, the new producer liked Kirby's uh, version, and he got it. So, nothing against Kirby. He, you know, he just did what everybody else did. He just got ended up getting it. And of I course. was, yeah, I was kind of bummed, man. I was like, really? Yeah. Like, and I mean, of course. And there's even been other, you know, I mean, like in uh, Transformers Animated, which was the prelay one. After that, uh, there was a the hot shot, different guy. There was some. Yeah. There was a, there was an Armada video game. Uh, where like everybody was different for whatever reason, and that that was when the show was airing, and I'm just like, what? The, what kind of yeah. sense does that make? I don't know. I'm. They I'm, didn't even ask us for that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even get asked for that. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't. I don't even know where those kind of things come from. It's bizarre. But I I saw all of your work on Armada, and uh, a, probably a good majority of it from Energon, which was the one following that. Um, and uh, and I mean it it was. It was interesting for me because, like, I mean, not only was that my first, like, Transformers show, but also, like, following, like, kind of the the development of those characters. Because I didn't know the Transformers to be, like, characters that would grow and evolve. And this was, you know, those early days of, like, this is just after the two-fold strike of Pokemon and Dragon Ball happened. So anime was everywhere. And this uh, this idea of... uh, uh, you know, of, of shows that were, of, of kids cartoons that were serialized uh, was like a new thing for, for kids. Uh, you know, so like seeing, even though, and it's funny because a lot of jaded, like older Transformers fans, even back then it would be like, oh man, Armada's the, the Pokemon ripoff Transformers where they're trying to bait you with buying the mini cons or whatever. And I'm just like, I don't care, whatever, it's cool, I like it, you know. And, and Hotshot in particular, I mean, I don't know, I, I know this is going back forever ago. I don't know if you remember much of this stuff, but like his whole thing with like having to become a leader type role and then like, you know, the, looking after like the weapons, like the, the Star Saber or whatever, whatever the heck it was, you know. And yeah. like, and then getting the, his color change, whatever that was about. <laughs> it just happened. You got a but, color change? But, I, don't, yeah. I don't remember that. Part. Yeah, there was, there was some part later in the show where, like, and now everybody has a color change. Buy them again. <laughs> okay. But, uh, <laughs> but, yeah. but no, I mean, like, I, I don't know how, how long, uh, I think that was like 50 something episodes. I don't know how long was spent on that show. But, like, do you have any, I don't know, do you have any, like, particular kind of stories or memories or standout things about uh, working on that show back then? Well, uh, honestly, just the, I only have, the very first memory of me saying transform. Oh. I, I remember it. I, I was I was giddy as a as a kid inside. I was like, this is so cool. Mm-hmm. Um, because you know, it, Transformers is just just to say the name that you were a part of a Transformer series was so cool for me. And, and honestly, like um, when I look back on my voice career and stuff, that's that's near the top, definitely top three things that I've done. Just because that was a big, huge part of my childhood, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I auditioned, they did, like, a He-Man remake, and I didn't get on that, and I was like, oh, that would have been cool. And then there was a G.I. Joe remake, I didn't get on that, and I was like, oh, dang. Well, at least I got Transformers. Yeah. <laughs> <You know>? yeah. <laughs> at least I got one of the three. And that was back, like, back in that day, um, the Vancouver voice business was so popping at the time. Oh, yeah. It was so popping. Like, I was in the studio all the time. And um, you know what? You know what killed it was um, was nine eleven actually. Really? Yeah, nine eleven changed everything. Yeah, mm. for sure. Because, and I understand. I completely understand why. Because when nine eleven hit, um, a, a lot of the Mer- American producers just wanted to keep all the work at home to you know feed the American uh, economy and everything. Mm-hmm. 
which was totally understandable. At the time, my wife and I, between anime and prelay, we were on 16 cartoon shows between the two of us. Wow. And then those shows died off, and we were down to one. Yeah. Now, that next year was really tough, man. Yeah. It was really tough. Because everything changed. Like when, when American producers are coming up to Canada and we have a talent pool here that kind of relies on that and then you guys stop coming, it was like, whoa, maybe we got to do something else. You know? <laughs> yeah. But, I, but a uh, lot of us wrote it out and then it slowly picked out. It's never returned to how busy it used to be. Uh, and it's shifted, right? Like they've shifted now. There are a lot of new people coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, and the whole game has shifted, as you would know, with MP3 auditions and not – in-person castings anymore it's that's shifted everything as well yeah i i kind of hate it uh i mean because i <laughs> i i started 2009 was my first pro gig and i mean like in new york like i mean there were there were very few studios at that time and still now in new york that do you know animation stuff at all but yeah. I, I always had to come to the city to to do an audition and even if it was for one character and i'm there for like 10 minutes i always prefer doing it as opposed to being from home and still even now uh, I actually even we're time traveling a bit recording this in September this is going up in October but today as we're recording this I went in for an in person one because I had the option I always always prefer to if you can do that because it's you're getting direct feedback and not just like okay yeah, here's like my I might, mp3 <laughs> yeah like I might do a character and be like oh this sort of thing yes of course and they might say no man can you go a little higher and then you go oh yeah okay this sort of thing okay now I'm here you know and you can't do any of that when you're just doing your little mp3 at home right yeah so yeah. It, I, I agree with you um I live a little bit outside of the city so for me it's way more con convenient and I have a nice home studio but at the same time token mm -hmm. i'm like the relationships that used to be there where you would like work with a casting director they're not there anymore not unless you get on one of the shows it's really tough man yeah i mean really I, I i vividly remember the time when like vancouver was doing like everything that i was seeing on tv you know between whether it was anime or, or prelay entirely like everything yeah. was you guys and, uh, and yeah, I mean, like even I, I would say by the end of the 2000s when it was starting to peter off a little bit more and I was get, until funnily enough, I, I do also remember, I don't know if you ever did any episodes of, of uh, My Little Pony, but like that was the show that like, you know, oh, right. Oh, these guys. Oh, yeah. And I felt like such a hipster where like suddenly people were like, dude, I'm such a big fan of Tabitha St. Germain and Andrea Lipman and, you know, et cetera. And I'm just yeah. like, man, I was a fan of them when I was, in, when I was 12. Like, shut up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, um, at, no, and no, I did not get, I had so many callbacks for that show. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I, uh, I could not buy a part for that show. Uh, that show was like, uh, uh, yeah, it was a thorn in my side not to get on My Little Pony because you know what? Apparently, if I just say one word or one sentence or something <laughs> like that, you can get sent across the world. To oh yeah, oh yeah, uh huh. My yeah, Pony. yep, yeah. I was picking up on that very quickly. I was like, oh yeah. How, he... many pe <laughs> how come people don't have a Ninjago convention? Like, you know, what the heck? I, you know, I well, okay. Let's let's move into that because I mean, first of all, I, I have to imagine there's a Lego convention somewhere in the, on planet Earth. Somebody get know. on that, uh, but. So, you know, I, I mean, of course, much like with Transformers, probably even more so than Transformers, I think every human has, has played with a Lego or two. Uh, I, I've loved Lego stuff forever. I was big into, uh, particularly I was big into Bionicle uh, for a time, which you guys did back in the day. Uh, and, you know, it was interesting because I remember over the, over the 2000s as they were doing a lot of different Lego projects it seemed like a lot of different ones were kind of just like all right they're in and then they're out and then they do this for a little while and then they move on to something else and mm -hmm. and, and admittedly when ninjago started i took one look at it and i was like mm, i feel like this is going to go the way of like was it like legends of chima or you know whatever else was before that or bionicle when that bionicle was no, a big thing for a while Chima came after oh what oh was it oh okay okay chima okay. was supposed to actually replace ninjago Re okay. See, that, mm -hmm. that's what I'm talking about. I thought Ninjago was going to be just another one of those that came and went. And, and like, I remember I would tune into Cartoon Network and I'm like, oh, wow, this is still going. And, oh, yeah, I guess these, these must be new episodes. And, yeah. and, and you were saying, what, eight, not nine seasons now? What I can say on the internet to you is, like, we've done, like, nine official seasons. <laughs> but, yeah, mm. it's not over yet, dudes. Yeah, I But, yeah, no, with Ninjago, like, 
uh, it was supposed to be well originally a special. We did a special, mm-hmm. and we didn't know if the um, if if it was going to go or not. But the, as voice actors, we kind of had a good feeling. We were like, "Wow, it's it's like you know Ninja and it's Lego. I mean, come on, this is really cool." And so we we were excited with the possibility, and so we weren't. When it said, oh, yeah, season one, it was like, okay, cool, we're doing a season. Season two, yeah, it makes sense. Because we started to hear the numbers. Uh-huh. Um, the numbers were like three and a half million, four million views on Wednesday night at 7.30 wow. on Cartoon Network. And, you know, that is crazy. Now, comparably, when UFC at the time put on a free Friday night fight, they were pulling in numbers like 1.1 to 1.8 million. And I'm saying this because I like martial arts, but, you know. So I was going, so UFC is pulling in like under 2 million and we're pulling in close to 4 million. Like this is a no brainer. This, this show is off the chart. Apparently the, the Nielsen, the, the rate, was it Nielsen? Is that how you say it? Yeah. The ratings yeah. were like off the scale. Like a couple of the ninja, uh, top Ninjago guys were telling me about it, mm-hmm. that these ratings were just not normal. So it became a quick hot property, but it was supposed to then be a three season thing Mm -hmm. and it had enough success that it was supposed to move them into Chima and the next thing. And then they thought they would keep riding the success, but really it's the fans that complained. They don't want Chima. They want a Ninjago. They want a more Ninjago. Mm -hmm. And it's really the fan outcry that got the show back and how popular the toys were and blah, 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 blah. And now it's just so popular. Um, I mean, the ratings aren't where they used to be, but I mean, I think they equate it to more along the lines of uh, toy sales and and how is it doing as a con- as a consumer product um, more than the ratings. But they go hand in hand, and the show's still so stinking popular that yeah, I can't see it ending tomorrow. No, I mean, and, and like to have that many. I mean, that that's a that is a rarity for anything now. Uh, any yeah, kind it's of Cartoon show. Network's Cartoon Network's longest um, running animation ever what wait ever oh my god ever yeah. wow yeah. with how how many episodes they aired uh it's the longest running animated series now on cartoon hour wow and, it, and it's not over so yeah. yeah i'm i'm getting i'm getting to be a part of a record right like maybe <laughs> when this is all over um yeah I'll, maybe no other series will break that record and just to be honest with you i don't think there's ever gonna i i, I hope there's gonna be but i don't think there's ever gonna be a part that i'm gonna get to play as big as zane uh-huh. ever again because he, he he's so a part like like people say to me they go oh and i get all these comments about be, me being famous or me being a celebrity and stuff mm-hmm. and i'm like <laughs> i don't think so like i can go to a grocery store nobody knows who i am uh-huh. i can walk in la down the street nobody knows who i am like nobody knows who i am that doesn't make me like i am not famous you know i've got uh, uh, you know 18,300 something subscribers that doesn't make me famous but the character i play is extremely famous oh yeah yeah, I like mean, Zane, like, yeah, world, yeah, worldwide, he is famous. Like everybody in whatever country, so like you said, kids play with Lego, so they know Ninjago property. Like I've seen YouTube videos with like really top YouTube uh, YouTubers, mm-hmm. and they'll be with a kid or something in a toy a toy aisle, and the kid will pull out a Ninjago set. That's what they want. I'm like, yeah. oh, <laughs> good choice, good choice. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I, but it's still like that character. I don't think I'll ever be able to top just on um, number one. I was able to create his voice. It wasn't like a copy of someone. Um, and number two, uh, the popularity of him, even like, I mean, I would love to play a character like Batman or something like that. Right. But, mm-hmm. you know, if you did something like that, you're only going to do it for a certain amount of episodes. I doubt that I'm going to be able to touch what I've done with Zane. So. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty proud of that work, actually. I'm pretty proud of it, yeah. Yeah, no, and I mean, you know, the other thing, too, is even comparatively, I mean, like, of course, it's it's great to play characters like that. I mean, I know that uh, Vancouver's doing, like, the Marvel uh, shorts, like the superhero shorts or whatever up there. Mm-hmm. That's that's always cool. And, like, you know, hot, hot shot slash hot rod slash, you know, et cetera. But, I mean, I think what's cool for you guys is the fact that, like, I mean, because I know there have obviously been other things such as the movie and the video games where it's, you know, other people, but uh, but you guys originated these characters, as far as I know. There was no like you know pre-existing thing for no, it was us, yeah, yeah yeah, which I think is awesome because that's re- that's really when it's like you know it's not just oh I'm a I'm a you know 
just the guy who does the voice or whatever, and you know, you're you're one of like sixty different guys that have played Batman at something. It's like, no, right. I I created Zane's voice. You know, and it's funny from the the little bits of the show because I admittedly I've not seen much of it, but the little bits of it that I have seen, and and based on a lot of the the comments you get from uh, you know your your guests on the show, uh, be, and and having also <laughs> had to play characters myself that are much like that, where it's the challenge of like we have to make them interesting and not monotone, but also they are kind of a robot, so they have to have those qualities kind of thing. Right. Like, that, that is a tricky part to play, and you do it really, really well. And I think it goes to show the fact that, like, you know, in tandem with the creators have laid out a really interesting arc for him, some of the, the, the big, whoa, holy crap scenes I've seen with him and, you know, how his design has changed now from various things. It's like, and that makes me happy also that, like, you know, even if if like it's not a show for me, I'm saying, oh, this is a good show. Like kids are l are lucky to have this show now and like still be following it and still like seeing these characters grow and develop. Like you know, producers don't think that that kids are idiots and they can follow a story for ten seasons. <laughs> and uh, I guess kind of the, the last little thing I wanted to talk about was um, I guess just this this uh, all the stuff you do for your channel. I mean, like for for me, the the stuff that I always love seeing and I've watched uh, a, a few times each. I was actually just watching the uh, the Brian Dobson one uh, a couple days ago just because I found Brian! Uh, my God, all those Dobson boys, they're all lovely. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I got a thing with Brian. There was, back in the day, me and Brian, we spent a lot of time in session back in the day. Yeah. Uh, and there, there was a thing that we used to do all the time and he would say, he, Brent Miller and I'd say Brian Dobson, but every time, every time I see Brian, I do this. I'm Brian Dobson, and you're not. <laughs> you go, I'm Brent Miller, and you're not. <laughs> and you point each other. You point when you say not. You point at the guy. I don't know. Uh, that that dude's been in my life for a while. Yeah, I, Brian is awesome. I love him. I, I met him, uh, my God, I think, jeez, uh, eight years ago at a convention in Vancouver, uh, and yeah. he was so kind, so, so personable and cool. Um, yeah, he's, he's awesome. I, uh, Paul Dobson is a personal hero of mine, and I would love to meet him mm -hmm. someday because he's excellent. Uh, every, everybody, all, all the main cast, Vince, Mike, Adam, Waith, Kirby, uh, Jillian, now, now Sam. Sam's great. Uh, Kelly Metzger, everybody. I mean, you guys are all like outstanding like it's it's it is, it is an excellent excellent yeah cast. The, ca the cast of ninjago is pre uh, pretty awesome yeah. honestly like they're it's it's so easy now because we've done it so many episodes uh, the chemistry is there yeah you know we 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 know what each other's gonna do but you know i've had i've had a lot of fun experiences with those guys they mm -hmm. share like a lot and you usually do a show and it's over right or you if you're doing dubbing you're by yourself you don't even work with the other guys yeah. you might see them at a cast party or something mm -hmm. but when you do a show like ninjago and you've done that many episodes that means that many days that you spent with them in the studio laughing at somebody's stupid joke you know like um yeah it's just I, they're very uh dear to my heart all of them including jillian who's no longer with us but many 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 hours with jillian I know. Uh, up till season seven. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, I love but... the I love the interviews with all them. Those are those are some big favorite things of mine on your channel. Um, I guess like with with managing all that, because here's the thing. Like, I I this might be weird to hear coming from me, and I, I hope it don't cause any eye rolls. I like only kind of mildly consider myself to be a YouTuber because it's not my like. I know people that make their living doing just YouTube stuff. And like for, yeah. for me, it's just like, I'll put up a video or two, or like if I'm streaming to work on the game I'm doing or whatever, you know, like it, it's a platform for some stuff, but like you, you produce like so much like good consistent content for your viewers. I mean, like what is the, what is the day in the life of, of what is the day in the life of Brit Miller? Cause no one <laughs> else can be him uh, of doing all this stuff. And, and you know, having a family and going to, to actually do voice recording and everything. I mean, like, my God, like that's, that's why I say like, wow, you had an hour to spare for me. My God, I'm so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, I honestly, my life is pretty, uh, busy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, you know, but I, I, number one, I've chosen this and, um, and number two, I love it. So, I mean, even with like, for instance, Jada's on set this week, right? The Jada's doing a show called Wayne Calls the Heart right now. Mm -hmm. So 
um, you know, based on schedules, either her, my, my wife or myself would be going tomorrow, for instance, like she's, you know, be on set all day. Well, tonight I'll be doing, we are on the weekend. We did coaching for it. And then tonight I'll do uh, revised coaching. So with my, with my children, they have a lot of stuff that comes up like on, on Friday, Chelsea had two pretty big auditions. So even just being like a, like a acting coach for my children takes up a lot of my night activities mm -hmm. if, if that could be uh, if i could say that <laughs> um but as far as like uh well dude like you i'm with voiceover you're you're swamped one day and it's quieter the next but i am never not doing nothing i'm always doing something mm -hmm. and uh, nowadays i'm just knocking on a lot of doors and having a lot of conversations with people as far as the 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 youtube goes um yeah dude it's tough man it's tough because you you feel like once you build an audience there's a massive demand on me for more. Mm -hmm. They want more, more. Why don't you do this? And you know what YouTube wants? YouTube wants you to come out with like a regular upload schedule and they want like little tricks on how to grow your channel and do this and that and that. And I, that is just not me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be thwarted by creativity, like meaning every Monday I'm going to release a video or whatever, but oh, I better do a video. And if I'm not happy to hit upload, I don't want to put it up. Oh, yeah. So that's why I never do it. And also based on my schedule, how can I predict if I'm not going to be in a session or auditioning all day long or whatever, I can't all of a sudden be like, well, let's do a video. Let's do a video. You know, <laughs> I just, but like up before Comic-Con, because I went to Comic-Con this year for, uh, rep to represent, uh, you know, Ninjago on the Lego, uh, panel and all that stuff, which mm -hmm. was awesome. Mm -hmm. But leading up to that, I was killing myself with videos killing myself trying to get content out like I got these two big uh, Lego sets early and I was doing build videos and I spent hours and hours like I literally kicked my family out of the house for for weekends <laughs> and said go to the go to the beach just leave me alone because and and people don't realize that right what I get is a lot of times is oh can you do this instead now can you do this and hey I got a video idea for you blah 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 and I'm like I don't need any of that I've got 20 <laughs> video ideas lined up uh, that I can't get to yeah because of time right so when comic-con ended and I came home I've just slowed my YouTube life down mm -hmm. can I can I let people in on the on the financial world of you of YouTube uh, oh please please do <laughs> okay so at least from my experience you basically financially get about a dollar every thousand views mm -hmm. so if i put out a video and it gets ten thousand views i just made ten dollars but it maybe took me <laughs> four hours or you know what i mean i can't yeah, uh -huh. so I'm like i can't justify uh, spending so much time on youtube when it's not paying off financially mm -hmm. but i still want to keep it going for the fans and 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 their support and i really there's some really solid people that connect on my channel so I want to keep that alive. Obviously, I just have to slow it to a pace that I can actually um, endure because I have so much else going on in my life. You know, on top of that, I don't. I don't consider myself a YouTuber. Honestly, it's funny that you say that. I don't consider myself that because I think a YouTuber is somebody that relies on that income for their mortgage, their rent, their bills, or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, if I'm making like a hundred or two hundred dollars a month on YouTube. That's not changing my life. No, nope. that's like that's letting me take my family to dinner one night. So, <laughs> so it's like I got to have life balance. Right. As oh, yeah. much as I honestly I love my channel and I love uh, the people that are on it that are positive. But anybody that's negative, I just say, you know, just leave, man. Yeah. I, I'm trying to have a positive community there. My gosh, I feel like this is therapy. <laughs> 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 I've done it. I've done it, everybody. Uh, Brett, thank you so much. Uh, this has been lovely. Um, I guess, I mean, you know, it should go without saying, but I mean, do you want to do the usual thing of a, pl please plug your, plug your social media. If people haven't already gone to it by this point, uh, for, for folks out there, if they're curious. Okay. Well, on Instagram, I'm at Brent Miller voice on Twitter. I'm at Brent Miller Vox V O X. And on YouTube, you could just, you know, search Brent Miller, Brent Miller voice, whatever you want on YouTube searches. And you'll find me. I'm the guy that looks like me. <laughs> the guy who looks like you. <laughs> You're uh, like, oh, man, I have no idea what he looks like. like damn you'll it. find me. I'm <laughs> the only one that interviews voice actors and does stupid fart jokes. Uh, yeah, you know what? I, 
<laughs> I, I did meet also, uh, I, don't know, I've, I don't know if you've, he's ever been on Ninjago, but uh, Richard Cox, I, I met at the same con. Oh, yeah, Richard, man. Years ago. Yeah, um, he, he has not been on uh, Ninjago. Okay. But uh, I did do a lunch with him last year during a Ninjago session in between with him and Sam Vincent. Ooh. Does that count? Yes, it does. And I mean, okay. you, I, you've been in probably 10 other things with him at some point because he's in everything too. But, I, but m mostly what I appreciate him for beyond anything he's done in the acting world is that he is the undisputed king of fart noises, <laughs> of, oh. of artificial, <laughs> I, like my <laughs> hey, God. Hey, Chris, that's pretty good. <laughs> 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 oh the, god oh it smells like so the best is my daughter jada like we actually like, will like sit around and and like bounce fart noises off each other <laughs> and be like yeah that was a good one <laughs> <laughs> and then she'll be like no no but she she does this one this is her one uh, I'm like that's like the uncontrollable granny. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> let's taste that. No, no, that, like no, it. that, no, that, that's that's me at the end of a long day. Oh, oh, I wasn't supposed to say that out loud. Damn it. Okay. On that note, <laughs> everybody, please go follow Brent on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube all at once. Like literally, pull open the windows and just like hit the button at the same time. Oh, Do it, Chris, please. That's like very nice, man. Thank oh, you for that plug. Wow. Of course. Th thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. Uh, in the comments below, everybody, please. Uh, leave, leave, a, leave a nice thing about any particular parts, whether it's Transformers, Ninjago, I don't know, Fat Dog Mendoza, anything that he's been, <laughs> Brent's been in. That's, Gosh, that's, a, you're going that's back, a good way one. Back. That's a good one. That's that's way back. Uh, <laughs> go, uh, leave a comment about uh, your favorite bits of uh, of, of Brent's work uh, from from previous cartoons or otherwise. And uh, just forget all that and just say how handsome I am. That's <laughs> or, all I care or, about. Or that. Talk about. How good his facial hair is, please. My sideburns. Uh, <laughs> Talk that. about those. Yes. <laughs> and, that, and that little piece of hair underneath my lip that's called a soul patch, but people call dirt. Uh, I get comments about uh, that all the time. And my mom thinks I have a cone head. Uh, oh. I don't. My mom literally thinks I have a cone head. Oh. Mom, and now my little niece is calling me Conehead. Oh, uh, Mama, Mama Miller, come on, lay, lay off. That's not, that's not okay. No, she, <laughs> she's awesome, but she goes, "Stop making your hair so spiky. You have, a, you look like a Conehead." <laughs> and now I have my and my little niece going up to me, and she sees me. Hello, Uncle Conehead, and I'm like, "What the heck, man?" <laughs> I'm sorry, you tried to sign me off five minutes ago, wow. Chris. Maybe I just wanted to keep going because this is the only social activity I have all day long. <laughs> the rest of the day, I'm talking into a microphone. I'm I'm glad I'm glad I could be a a, a talk box too. <laughs> I'm glad I could be an outlet for you. All right, yeah. that's gonna do it. That's it for me. That's it for Brent. Thank you for listening, everybody. Uh, I, th the next guest for Voice October this year will be a mystery, but I hope you enjoy it. I've got some great folks that are gonna be on this year. Uh, Brent is the first and second is the best third is the one with the hairy chest and the fourth one I don't even know if I'll have a fourth one yet who knows anyway thank you so much uh, we'll catch you all in the next one fare thee well bye thanks Chris